<laughs> Hi, Jim Ziegler, the Alpha Dog, and we got one heck of a show for you today. This is one of my oldest friends in the Speakers Association, past president of Georgia Speakers Association, award-winning speaker, but an absolute geek. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. I'm, I'm, when I say he's the uber geek, I mean that in a very nice way. I mean, this is Terry Brock, and I'm going to bring him on in just a second. What I'm doing right now is a little housekeeping. I want to be sure this broadcast goes public, not just to um, my friends, but to everybody. Okay, I hit public. We're rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you my friend, Terry Brock. Hey, Terry, how you doing? I am doing great, Jim. Really looking forward to this. Now, when I say Terry is an award-winning speaker, he has won every award earned and otherwise that the National Speakers Association affords, including the Cavett Award, the CPAE, and the one I've got hanging on the wall behind me here, the CSP. I mean, every designation. I mean, he's got all the letters behind his name. I mean, this guy is credentialed. Is that a fair statement? I think full cover bingo, something like that. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> but the biggest thing about Terry Brock that, that I personally admire, and, and I'd say, how, how long, Terry? 20 years, 25 I think at least that long. I was thinking it's closer to, it seemed like 2,000 years, but, uh, and it's been a good 2,000 years. Yeah, a good 2,000, but I got to tell you, Terry, we go back to at least 1996. Oh, yeah, at least. At least. And I mean, Terry is responsible for many of the innovations that I brought to the car business. Uh, I, I cheated. I got to, I got to admit, I, I saw Terry's work. I attended Terry's workshops at the, at the um, national speakers convention and immediately brought them to digital dealer and the end and the uh, national automobile dealers when I was speaking there. And a lot of the video things I've showed a lot of the, he taught me how to use Skype back when it was cutting edge and brand new. I mean, nobody heard of it. So uh, Terry is responsible for a lot of the things that I brought to the car business. And I still learn from him every day. When I say this guy is Mr. Gadget, you wouldn't believe what we're going to be talking about here in a minute. Now, now Terry, tell us about yourself and, and your career a little bit uh, before we get into the specifics. Well, I'm a communicator. I speak and I write. And I've been doing that since I was a little kid. Actually, when I was a, a junior in high school, I worked for a little community newspaper and got interviewed a state senator. They liked what I did and sent me at age 16 to Washington, D.C., and I covered Richard Nixon's inauguration. So no. you can on that one get an idea, whoa, that's what he did. But uh, I've been in speaking now for 35 years and a member of NSA, the National Speakers Association, for uh, about 30 years. And I bounced around. You mentioned Skype. Yeah, I was one of the cutting edge people getting out there trying it. And it's a principle that I would say to your, uh, those that are watching us right now, be willing to push the edge. Get out there and do it. I did that with Skype. And Jim, you got a chance to see it. And then what happened is a little bit later, Skype gave me a call. And they say, Terry, we've been passing your videos around the world to our various places. Nobody is doing what you're doing. Can you show us how to do that? I said, you know, for the right amount of money, we can work something out here. So I became I, I the that enterprise it, blogger. You ended up consulting for Skype. Oh, yeah. Well, I was the chief enterprise blogger there and uh, working with them, showing them how to do it, put it together and all that. And so that's what I do. I show people how they can deploy technology to better reach their customers, to do a better job. And of course, uh, to benefit their own bottom line. I'm all about helping people to make money, to generate it. And I think we've got a wonderful system here called the free enterprise system that is just uh, magical. When people work hard and the marketplace rewards that, I think that's a wonderful thing. You know, I've been traveling 200, 250 days a year for 25 years. I've, I've slowed that down quite a bit lately, but we're still doing the big conferences. I can recall when, when I stood at the Digital Dealer Convention, and this was like Digital Dealer 2 or 3, maybe 2002 or 3, mm -hmm. and I stood on stage and I held up a high-tech device called a flip camera. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> you taught me that. And, I said, does anybody in the audience know what this is? And nobody could just tell me what it was. So I went out in the audience and I videoed a, an interview to the person in the front row, walked back up to the podium, stuck it in my laptop, downloaded the video, emailed it to myself. And I said, that's how you can communicate with customers. That's right. And a year later, the flip camera was epidemic in the car business. Yep. 
See, Jim, you did the right thing. And that's the most important thing. It's like, here's the cool technology. I'm kind of a geek and a nerd at heart. And I like the technology, but that's only part of it. What really matters is connecting it with customers in a way that's going to help them. And you sending that video out to people, let them know, hey, here's a guy that's a real human being. He cares about me. This is not some form letter that you're sending out, you're using, re this is really me, you hear my voice, you see me, and I'm responding to that person. Video is three-dimensional and it humanizes the sender. Yep. Hey, we got Stan Scher, Stan Franco, and Joe Calla on the broadcast right now. They're all saying hello to you. Hi there, guys, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, th this is absolutely tremendous. Well, well Terry, I, I, I was amazed, you know, Debbie and I moved to Florida. Yeah, we're glad you're here. And his lovely wife, Gina Carr, I saw them at the Speakers Association in Tampa. And uh, Debbie and I are highly considering joining that organization. It looks like a really super chapter. It's really good for me. I've been a member of it for almost 22 years now. When I moved here, I moved to Florida on a Friday, closed on the condo. And then that next day, Saturday, I spoke for them and did a presentation. I've been a member ever since. And I do it because... I want to pour good information to my brain that helps me make more. It's kind of like uh, Ben Franklin said. He said, pour the coins of your purse into your mind and your mind will overflow your purse with coins. And so that's where NSA uh, comes in uh, for me, the National Speakers Association, our chapter, and at the other levels, uh, national and international. I find that as you learn and you're willing to put in the time, the money, and the energy to learn and improve your skills, get better, you get ahead. Too many people sit around going, well, I want to learn, but I want to get the money. I just don't want to work for it. You owe it to me. Well, that doesn't work in nature and it doesn't work <laughs> in the real world. You know, welcome to the planet, Sparky. You got to get out there and you got to make it work. Well, one thing I found out is early on in my speaking profession is most people that tell me to stop and smell the roses can't afford any damn roses. That's true. Well, I like smelling those as I'm rushing by here and there. But by the way, it is important. Guys like you and me, we do need to every so often have some disciplined downtime. Leave the planet, relax, rejuvenate, recharge those batteries. We do better when we do that. But still, we enjoy running and really getting the job done and helping others make their lives better. I think away I our saw you uh, last two weeks ago, we were on vacation for the first time in that many years. Uh-huh. And we, we, we attended the speakers meeting while we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know what a workaholic I've been all these years. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was just so foreign to me to, to do nothing. Yeah, but I think that's good is for us to get out there and to, to work and to do that, but then take the time to rejuvenate, and then we can be much better off. But I think as we provide helping others, we do better. It's like often quoted what Zig Ziglar said, that you can get anything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. Zig used to tell me I misspelled my name. Yeah. <laughs> Did you tell him he misspelled his? <laughs> yeah, well, he said, Jim, I got a joke that will knock your hair out. And he looked at me and said, oh, I see you heard it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see you heard it. Yeah. I was like, old Zig, yeah. Old Zig, yeah. He was a good man. I was honored to be with him in the Speaker Hall of Fame. And uh, he's a Cabot Award winner as well. And just a wonderful man behind the scenes. Many people saw him on stage. Many people read his books, which I did. But also behind the scenes, one-on-one. -on -one. He was a gentleman. He was a magnificent human being. Started out as a pots and pans salesman. Yes, he did. That's right. He almost sued me once. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1977. Rolling back the rolling back the time clock. A few here. days ago. I was doing a seminar in Tallahassee, Florida called Love and Relationships. And we bought seven thousand dollars worth of Tallahassee radio. Hmm which in 1977, we owned the town. Yeah. We, we had, we had black urban contemporary. We had country, we had pop, we had hard rock. We had every station in town. So I had about 200 people show up at the Capitol Inn for my, my free presentation that led to the upsell for the paid event. And Zig and his brother, Judge Ziegler. Right. They thought I was advertising that I was him. <laughs> and judge show, judge showed up at my event with a, a lawyer mm. 
had to show my driver's license and explain to him, I really am named Ziegler. I don't know who Zig Ziegler is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I, I got to meet Zig Ziegler in a roundabout way before the Speakers Association. Well, that is good. Yeah, but I imagine there have been people that have tried that with others. You know, people saying, well, they're not going to make it on their own. They're trying to hurt someone else. And Zig was a subject of that. Uh, there were times people tried to hit him. And so he was just probably doing what uh, lawyers had told him to do. <laughs> oh, wait, we, we, we became friends after that. I mean, yeah. we weren't sleeping at each other's homes kind of friends, but I saw him at all the events and we had lunch and, you know, just, I knew him, knew him fairly well. Mm -hmm. not, probably not as well as you, but a Cavett Award. T tell us about the Cavett Award. What is the Cavett Award? Well, the Cavett Award is an award that is given from the National Speakers Association, and it comes from our co-founder, one co-founders, Cavett Robert, whose idea was to make the pie bigger to help other people and to get ahead. And so I'm deeply honored to have received that. There, it was a complete surprise. Uh, no one knows who's gonna get it, except just a few people on staff who know just a little bit before that, because they're counting the votes and all that. And so it's a way for us to say, we're gonna take that spirit of Cabot, which we talk about Cabot Robert being the founder, and Cabot's uh, ideas still continue to live on today. He left this planet a few years ago, but we still take his message of helping others and being able to sp have a spirit of trade and helping others uh, continue forward. Helping others. What, what, a, what a great thing. Um, the, the award itself is a little statue of Cabot. Yeah. Yeah, I got it right there in the other room right now. So, you know, it weighs, I think about it, hey, 20 or 30 pounds, it seems like. And people go, oh, Terry, is that heavy? And I said, it ain't heavy. It's my Cabot. <laughs> I came up with that. The Molinos are going, what does that mean? And, you know, and others are going, oh, you know, but I, I just thought, I thought of that one on my own. Fantastic. Now put your website up on the screen and now I want to get into the meat of this conversation. Are you tuned in ready? Let's do it. Okay. What new gadgets are you are you talking about these days? What are you, what technologies are you introducing? Well, there's a lot of them out there. And the way I look at technology is how can we use this, not just because it's nifty and groovy, as I said before, but it's because this is going to help people. One that I would like your uh, listeners, those of you that are watching this, write this down and drop me a note. Let me know how this works for you. I think you're going to like it. It's a program called Loom, L-O-O-M. And Loom like is a video program. What's that, Jim? Loom, just like it sounds? Yeah, Loom, just like it sounds, L-O-O-M, and you got get it at useloom.com, U-S-E, useloom.com. And it, what it is, it's a plug-in that works with Google Chrome. It's an extension that you have, put it on there, and it gives you the ability to look into your webcam and create a video very rapidly. You do it by just clicking a couple buttons, and then you can send it out almost as rapidly. That's really important, meaning that you can then send out a video to someone, which is you. They know it's you, not a form letter, et cetera. And because we, for most of us, we can talk faster than we can type, you're able is to- this, Is this something like CoVideo or something like that? Similar to that, I haven't used CoVideo. I've heard of it, um, but I have not used it. Something like the iJot that we had a few years ago. They went out of business, but it's similar to that. And this one, by the way, is really nice. It's free. So, Jim, is free in the budget for you? Free? Free, I mean, co. And this is free? This one is free. At least right now, so they were fresh out there. I probably I imagine, I don't know, but I would imagine they've got a free version and then they're going to enhance it and give some extra goodies. It'll be a premium version. Uh, but right now I've been using it. You can share the screen. You can have your video on there alone or with the screen. One of the things I often do, somebody sends me an email. And what I do is I go, hey, Bob, it was good to hear from you. I create a video with my picture on there, my video, I'm moving around while I'm reading Bob's email to say, oh, you asked three questions, Bob, da, 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 da. and I'm answering them right there on the spot. Loom, use loom.com. Yeah, that's it. That is that one that will put bar. more into your pocket. I just put it on the sidebar so people can see it. You know, you, uh, you mentioned iJot. Yes. Now, iJot is a program that we used before. They went out of business, unfortunately, about a year or so ago. Well, um, it didn't really go out of business. I, what, what happened is the, the man who owned it invited me and Debbie out on his yacht in, in Seattle. We were, rode, rode around the lake in Seattle, and he took us on a tour and fed us. And, and come to find out, he was 
attempting to sell us the company. Oh, okay. He, he is a he's a he, he's a pretty strong technical guy with a lot of other businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, he he said, "I jot successful. It just I don't want to spend any money R and D improving it to stay competitive." And he said, "It's very successful. We have a good customer base, but." Basically, I don't want to screw with it anymore. Basically, that's what he's saying. Those kind of things happen. Uh, but the idea is that you can use Loom or that or whatever. Uh, really good to connect with people. Now, another video product I use that has some similar features and a little bit of overlap, but does a whole lot more in other areas is Zoom. And of course, we know Zoom. I think you use that on a regular basis, don't you, Jim? I use Zoom, and I'm using what we're on right now is BeLive.tv. Yep. BeLive is another wonderful tool that's out there. It works with Facebook, and we can tie it. With Zoom, you can tie it into Facebook or have it stand alone. It's really nice for creating product because it has that wonderful, mouth-watering, delicious button at the bottom called Record. So okay, you can listen to the screen. Zoom. Which website? Uh, Zoom.us. Okay, www.zoom.us. Yeah, yes. It gives you the ability to do a, uh, uh, for, I think it's a hundred bucks a year. It might be a little bit more now. I'm grandfathered in for a hundred bucks a year. And I can have up to 50 people joining me on the screen here and be able to send a message out to, actually, I think that's a hundred now. I think they've just raised to a hundred. But if you say, gee, I want to reach a thousand or 10,000 or 50,000, you can do that. They scale it so that you can then start with a small version and go from there. And they've got a free version that gives you up to 40 minutes of a broadcast. So I suggest to most people, hey, try it for free. Keep it under 40 minutes. And then after a while, hey, it's worth a few nickels there. You can go out there and you can get it for roughly a hundred bucks or so a year. And you can connect with people, brilliant, dazzling video quality. Zoom. And be able to record it as well. Because a lot of people are, are using different formats on video for, in the car business, and you know, you know I'm, I'm centered in the automobile industry. Right. In, in the automobile industry, a lot of people are using uh, Facebook video. Facebook video is selling a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's created a lot of so, social media giants. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Speaking about giants, um, now, I talk about you being the, the techno geek, the, the actually the Uber geek. Is that fair? Uber geek. I guess we could do that. Yeah, I use Uber. I think Uber is a wonderful tool as well. <laughs> Uber means ultimate in German, of course. Exactly. And the uh, Uber as we have with cars as well. <laughs> you showed me a piece of your gadgetry before we started the broadcast. Make yourself bigger, taller. Oh, the way I do it. Yes, indeed. Well, it's like there's one of the things I highly recommend. Listen up. Look, perk up your ears on this one right now because this can help you in many, many ways. Like, for instance, one thing I can do is now you see what I can do is I can make it look like I am rising now and going higher and higher when actually my little desk here is going down. I can move it up and down and then I push it the other way and it goes back up to have a desk, a rising I'm desk. I'm shrinking. I'm going down. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we can do it this way because as we say now, you know, sitting is the new smoking. And so sitting too much and not standing can be very unhealthy. Standing up gives you ability to do more. Like for instance, right now I'm standing. So you see, I can come over here and I can create the video and I can put a graphic over here in post-production and come over here and say, but another point I want to mention is, and I'm putting about here. Zoom. Yeah, you know, by using the Zoom and using uh, by walking around like this, by having the desk, it lets me stand up and I can move around a little bit more when I'm doing the videos. Wow. You know, because I'm, I'm sitting down right now, obviously. I mean, yep. But if I had the desk that, that had that feature, now you can get up and you move around. See, I'm using my feet so I can do it. Plus, you keep more energy that way. You know, when you're doing the programs like in the afternoon, sometimes some of us will start feeling a little bit tired or so. By standing up, you've got more energy. You're able to deliver a lot more uh, for your videos. And even if you're just creating a one-on-one -on -one video, I look in there and I go, hey, Bob, it was great to see you last Wednesday. I know you were looking at that uh, SUV there. We've got it right now. And I want to give you a little bit more information on that. And so that way you've got the information, you're feeling better, you got more energy for yourself. A desk that goes up and down. The one I'm using here is called Autonomous. 
autonomous. It was like, I think it was a little over 300 bucks or so. Well worth it for me. I'm more productive, getting a lot more done. Plus, it is healthier. Standing up and then sit down a little bit and then stand up again. Keeps your body, keeps that blood flowing, keeps circulation going. Ladies and gentlemen, we're interviewing my friend, Terry Brock. Uh, Terry is the, the uber geek, the ultimate techno guy, unbelievable. And I just want you to, to, to hear my friend Terry talk about some of the technologies he's using. Uh, he just told us about Loom. Loom sent a video with free. Mm -hmm. I say free? Free is good, yeah. Free is free good. Is nice. We just talked about Zoom. That's amazing. You get a little feedback. How loud is your volume over there? Uh, my volume, is it okay? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm just getting a little reverberation. A little reverberation. It should be okay there. Let me check, check here. I'm not as familiar with the controls on BeLive. I use Zoom a lot, but uh, I just, we're, I just giving you an audio. My volume. It might have been me. Yeah, you're coming through fine. I can hear you really well. Fantastic. Um, hey, Jennifer Briggs just showed up. Uh, Jennifer Briggs is, is one of my better friends in the business. I mean, just super, super, super um, wonderful woman. Oh, golly. Joe Gaffrey is on. Is it Glufria? Geofria. Joe, how do you pronounce your name? I'm trying, I'm working on it. Um, Stan Share still with us. Shane Franco, Joe Calla. Uh, we got some pretty good, good audience building up here. Okay. Uh, you told us about Loom. You told us about Zoom. Now, what else rhymes with that that you got? Well, I don't know about the rhyming part, but I think there's a lot of other tools. And I think uh, one of the things I'm doing a lot now is with uh, is cryptocurrency with Bitcoin, blockchain, and tools like that. Are you doing very much with that, Jim? You know, I'm not. Um, our money is buried in the backyard in mayonnaise jars. Mayonnaise jars. I use tomato cans in the ground. You know, they tend yeah. to work pretty well, too. <laughs> <laughs> but that Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency is something I want to keep my eyes on because there's some really good tools with that and great ways to uh, generate even more business. We're seeing that the technology is there to move that even further. Right now, we see that there's a lot of concern with currencies around the world because of what, what they're doing. We've seen, we look what's happening in Venezuela or Zimbabwe and the U.S. with 21, almost 22 trillion in debt is a cause for concern for many. However, we know that, that it's a good idea to rely on technology. And when you can have that, hey, we do a lot better. A lot of automotive uh, folks are looking at using blockchain to keep track of repairs. Be able to say, okay, blockchain is a way of keeping a record of what's going on, a database. It's a ledger that is out there, but it's what's called immutable. You can't change it. So now we can make sure that the odometer is what it says it is. And there's none of that uh, shenanigans that sometimes goes on. And we know that we'll have records of all repairs. We'll know record when something needs to be done. We'll be trusting the programming of blockchain. And I find that's uh, something I would recommend for those in the auto industry. Keep an eye on it. Kind of put it in the back of your mind. Be aware of blockchain, cryptocurrencies, tools like Bitcoin. They're really good as well. Yeah, it's amazing you would mention, you know, for years, people used to be able to roll back the odometers mechanically. They could get up under the dash with a with a drill motor and yep, because it was mechanical. Then when it got to be electronic, nobody knew how to roll them back until just recently. Yeah. Now, the first time we experienced this is when the hurricane hit New York about five years ago. Yeah, Hurricane Sandy. When Hurricane Sandy hit New York, um, all those flood damaged cars showed back, showed back up on the market with fresh titles. How A lot of them that? did. <laughs> and, and now in the Carolinas, we're starting to see the same thing from the, the flooding there. Yep. So that's why something like blockchain will come in and it'll eliminate that because there'll be an assigned number and an immutable record. You cannot change it. And we've seen the challenges with uh, things that can be changed and the idea of keeping it in only one place versus many. Look what happened just a few, uh, recently. We saw with Equitable, or excuse me, Equifax, Equitable, when uh, they, 143 million people had their private confidential information exposed. You know, Jim, you know, your mother's maiden name and your childhood playmate and where you went to elementary school, all those kind of secret things. Now we know that. And when bad guys know that about you, it's in trouble. We're in trouble. Because you see, think about it. You got one place where they have a whole bunch of money versus with blockchain, you put them in many different places. So if I've got $100 million in one place, 
Would bad guys spend a million dollars to get that hundred million? Yeah, probably. Two million? Yeah, probably. Right up to a hundred million or so. But what if that hundred million was in 100 million different places? All one dollar each. And we change the formula every 15 minutes. Now you got something that is virtually impossible to break into, at least with the technology we have today. So wow. it's something that has some real major ramifications as far as new technologies. Blockchain is something to kind of put in the back of your mind and keep an eye on it. I recommend right now studying it, investing your time and investing your learning resources to uh, learn how to uh, see what it can do for you. Well, let me ask you another question. Where have you been lately? Oh, let's see. Dallas. And I've been, you know, here's another wonderful thing. I have been largely right here in Orlando, Florida. The really? reason I'm connecting with customers around the world via video. This way, I don't have to go to TSA for that little groping and uh, playing that they do and all that, that. I get a chance to do it. Now, I still travel, still get out. And I was over in Greece working with some folks a while back down in Mexico, doing something in different places around the U.S., et cetera. But I find it's really nice to be able to get the job done from wherever I want to be, which largely can be home, but I just take my little webcam, have computer, and be able to get the job done. Or nowadays, we can do it with our handheld devices. Handheld devices, and the video on those are really good as well. What kind of smartphone do you have? I've got uh, two of them. I've got an iPhone 6 Plus, and I've got a Note 8 from uh, Samsung. Samsung, I like two because I want to be bilingual. In the work that I do, it's good to know both sides, iOS and Android. And I'll tell you, this Note 8 that I've got, this has got to be the best computing device I have ever worked with in my life. I love it. I'm, 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 I'm saying the best phone I've ever owned is the one I just bought this year. Google Pixel. Google Pixel. Man, Google Pixel is a real good one. I haven't used it, but I've heard really good things about it. It's the best camera I have ever envisioned. Um, much eclipses anything Apple puts out. I don't know what how Samsung would would would, eclipse, would work with it, but still, it's it real is. good. Yeah, and I think the cameras are really important for the video as well as pictures. Oh, I mean, the, the, remember uh, Armstrong only took seven pictures on the moon. A teenage girl takes thirty-seven selfies in the restroom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, t technology has moved along. Oh yeah. golly, we got all kinds of people coming in on this thing. What well, other technologies? Give us, give us another, another tidbit. You know, one of the things the most important I think about video. We're going back to video that we're talking to, but you know what the most important part of video is? Audio. Using good audio. Too many people get on there, and there's something like this, and they're talking like this, and you can barely hear them, and you're going, "Wait a minute, I can't hear." We can tolerate bad video for a little while. But when we cannot hear it, we cannot understand it, not a good thing. Notice, for instance, I'm going to here, I'm going to go in. Is it okay if I just go right behind the scenes and say, here's how we're doing it, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. I'm using microphone right here. And so I can get up and I can move around like this and you can still hear me okay. Because I'm using the lavalier mic that's plugged in. That's You've one got a lav is it you got a wireless lav? No, no. This one is a wired lav. Here, I'm going to show you everything here. We got the wired and it's plugged in. Hold on a minute. I'm going to get my webcam here. I am showing you real stuff behind saying there it is. It's plugged into my computer, my little MacBook Pro right there. Regular uh, eighth inch uh, mini plug here and it goes into an eighth inch to USB adapter right there. And I got that. And uh Oh, Terry, you flipped off on me a second. And, whoops, Jim, I seem to have lost you. Oh, there we are. Now you're back there. But I uh, use that so that that way I can get better sound. Another tool that I use a lot, you might have seen these. I'm sure you have. If you've been watching podcasts and videos is the Yeti microphone. This is the old Yeti Tell microphone. Tell me about the Yeti microphone. How does it work? Yes, indeed. That's a good one. You got that right there. I got this one. I'll tell you, this is the one right here. Skipper Weiss himself gave me this one. Skipper Weiss is one of the co-founders of uh, blue microphones that makes this. And this is the one that Steve Jobs told him to make. He told me that Steve Jobs came to him and said, you got to make us a microphone. We don't have any in the Apple stores. We want it. And so he said, okay, we can put that together. The retail is going to be $250. And Steve Jobs said, no, retail will be a maximum of 150. That's it. They said, Steve, we can't do it. He says, you will do it. Then they did it. 
And so this is the microphone that helps your voice come through real clearly. I'm glad to I've see you. I've been using the Blue Yeti microphone for about two years. I have several of them. And what I love about it is directional. It's you can have it go left and right. It, it, it can go all around in a radiating pattern. Exactly. Here's the switch. That's how you do it right, right. there. You just change it to the setting that works best for you. If you're interviewing somebody, you can have it that way and that way. If it's you're doing a whole room full of people, like a, a 20 group with a horseshoe table, you can put it in the middle and have it take the whole gamut of sound in. Absolutely. It, it cancels any sound coming in from the side. Yep. This is a real nice one for those of you at home. It's a nice one. You can get this for about a hundred bucks or so at Amazon. So it works really well. There is a disadvantage though, in that it weighs a little bit. And if you're going to travel a lot, that's why, hold on a minute. Let me reach over here. You were right here in my office so I can reach over and get something for you. I'm going to reach over here and grab a new one that they came out with a little recently. Comes in a little bag like this. This is from the same company called Blue, Blue or Blue Microphones. And this one is the Raspberry. And look at this little gem. This one is really nice. It's smaller, much lightweight. And raspberry. It's called the Raspberry, obviously, for the color there. I will go on Amazon and buy one as soon as this broadcast is over. That, that looks incredible. Great little tool. And it comes with two cables, one that will go into your iOS device and another one that will go into the USB. So that's nice. But however, before you buy that, Jim, I'd recommend look at another one I don't have. I haven't got that one yet. They gave me this one, and but I haven't got the other one yet. It's the uh, uh, Yeti Nano, I think. I'd have to share my screen and look at it over on Amazon. But it's a new one that is like the Yeti here, but it's a much smaller one. They just came out with it. I have not tested it. I just know that I really like the company. They produce good quality, and they've come out with a brand new microphone. Je Jennifer Briggs just says, oh, my God, OMG, I want a raspberry. I mean, raspberry is nice. The audience is reacting, I son. I, just, mm, mm, I love this little guy. Because, see, hey, let me show you a little trick. See, it's got this right here. You can set it like that, and it will sit on there. Or you can move it in different ways, you know, to move it around. It gives you a lot of flexibility. You can set it like this on the, the stand, or you can set it like this. You've got a lot of flexibility. I take this one with me when I'm on the road. And I'll do broadcasts and conferences with clients from hotel rooms around the world. And this, that, that interacts with your Apple laptop? Yep. Or USB. Uh, it'll interact with your Windows machine as well. That is fantastic. I can always learn something new every time I'm around you, big guy. Oh, well, I learned from you too, Jim. We help each other. I'm glad to do it. And by the way, those of you that are watching this, if you got a question, at, when we're finished with this, if you go, oh, I should have asked her, or I wish I could ask him this, get in touch with me. You got my website there. Jim was kind enough to mention that. It's terrybrock.com, and that's spelled T-E-R-R-Y, and Brock is spelled the right way, B-R-O-C-K. So it's, it's on Terry the screen Brock. right now in front of you. Yep, I there we go. That's right. It's we on the screen. Over there. I see the Terry Brock on the screen. Yes, sir. <laughs> This, this is so good, old friend. I've always wanted to, to have this this one on one with you. You've taught me so much through the years. Well, I'm glad well, to do it. You know, uh, what was that song Mac Davis had? Rock and roll. You gave me the best years of my life, but I was always one step behind you. <laughs> yeah. Always one step behind you. I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. But I've always been one step behind you. It's it's, it's amazing. You have taught me so much, and now I've introduced you to the automobile business, and uh, I think you, uh, some some new audience will get to hear from you firsthand and, and tap into some of the things you know and some of the things you do. Well, I would love to help out those of you that are watching this. If you've got some questions on how to do it, my whole focus is helping you be more productive, make more money, because you can then help your customers much more. And I can empower you to do that with tools, technologies, things like that. That's really good. But, but, but Jim, should I share with you my secret weapon, the best one? You think I should? Yeah. Okay. Don't don't tell any of the grown-ups, okay? Just between us. <laughs> but it's on this, and it's a little thing called Kindle and reading books. See, not many people read books these days. And that is where you've got the knowledge of really, really smart people, people who've done something really incredibly well. And you can tap into that for a few nickels 
and you get a chance to learn and grow having those people. For instance, think if what if you could have someone really, really smart sit next to you in the car on, say, an hour, two hour drive. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, they're really yes. smart in an area that's relevant to you. But then what if not just sitting there talking? They gave you a prepared presentation, the best of the best that they had refined and they had tweaked it to make it really good for you. Well, that's what a book is. They've taken time to do that. And I find I do best when I go back to my roots of reading, reading good quality literature. I'll let the other folks worry about the, the latest nonsense going on from those knuckleheads in Washington and whatever they're going to do or whatever something uh, stupid has happened in City Hall or whatever. I'll spend my time reading and nourishing, feeding my mind so I can learn how to help people a lot more, helping my customers, helping them to help their customers and do better. Terry, so I have I have known, known you. I've I've watched you. You know, you you go to Singapore, you go to Greece. I mean, I've always you know, I have done one international speech or two actually. Not counting the islands, I've done a lot of stuff in the islands. But as far as I was a keynote speaker in for the National Automobile Dealers Association of Australia. Oh, nice. Where were you in Australia? Brisbane, Gold Brisbane, Coast. That's right. Hey, and you said it right too. To I tell people in Australia, I used to go to Brisbane. Until I started going more, and then now I go to Brisbane. <laughs> well, they taught me to say Brisbane. Yeah, it's Brisbane. It's up there. I, I love those man. guys. They, they paid me a they paid me a fortune for that keynote. Yeah, that's a good. I love Australia. We were there a couple of years ago. Gene and I went there. I did eleven programs all throughout from Perth over on the west side up in uh, uh, the Great Barrier Reef and Cairns down there, Melbourne, Sydney a couple of times, and Brisbane of course, and a wonderful country. And I think we learn a lot when we get out and get around the world. I have been very fortunate and very grateful that I've been able to travel. I've been in uh, 40 countries so far in my life. And that, that, that's, I never did the international. I did Paris, France, and I did, um, you know, the, the Australian. Yep. And One I think I learned. What'd you learn? Only I only translate well to English speaking audiences. Ah. Okay, I'm doing the, I'm doing the French automobile dealers uh, association convention. Yeah. And they put a little lady on stage next to me to translate. Oh boy. <laughs> and I'm telling my funniest joke. I'm laughing my ass off on stage and, and, and the French people go. <laughs> yep. Different cultures are different. And I find, you know what? I'm just a pasty white guy that was born and raised in the Midwest. My parents were wonderful out in the country, literally way out in the country. And you grow up learning certain way of doing things. And I was grateful for that. But I find you learn a lot more. Your life becomes more enriched when you can get out and see people who think a little differently. They might speak a different language. Sometimes they do it like, for instance, in England, they speak a different language. We speak American. They speak British. And they're two different languages. What was oh, it? Trust George, me. <laughs> was uh, George Bernard Shaw, I think, said that the Americans and the uh, British are two people separated by a common language. And I think he was absolutely right. But you learn a lot when you sit down and you talk to people, hear it from their point of view. And I would encourage strongly, get out and get a passport, go to different countries, learn from people and listen. Listen to what they have to say. You'll learn and you'll be a better human being for it. Debbie and I went to London in 2008, mm -hmm. and I was so well connected in London because I was on the Academy, which was the British version of Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was there to buy the American franchise for Academy. October 15th, 2008, 60 people uh, from all over the UK came to have a party for Debbie and I. I mean, some of them came from Scotland. I mean, it was amazing. And we, we it was October 15th. That was the day the stock market crashed. That's right. That was. I had just written a $10,000 deposit to buy Academy for the U.S. Oh, boy. And I forfeited the deposit and came home because I had, I had some fires to put out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we saw a lot happening back then. But uh, it's interesting to see what they're going through right now, what Theresa May is going through with Brexit and the uh, stumbling they're getting on that. But I'm going to find out about it. Jim, I was just asked the other day to be the opening keynote speaker for next year, 2019 convention of the Professional Speakers Association of the UK, Ireland and Scotland. 
So I'm going to do it. It'll be my seventh presentation to that organization, and I'm looking forward to it, to get over there, and I'm going to be learning a lot. I like the way my buddy Chris Brogan says, what we need to do is grow bigger ears. Listen more. Listen to what people are saying. And if we, the old saying, you got two ears, two eyes, one mouth, and that's the proportion you should be using them. I have to raise well, my hand and say, yep. I tell you, you know, Debbie and I, we've, sh we've shortened our business. I haven't retired by any means. Good. But we've certainly slowed the business down. We're doing the conferences now. Mm -hmm. And our conferences, uh, matter of fact, I've got one coming up in Clearwater, Florida in March. Oh, that'll be easy to get to. You can walk there from the villages. Yeah, yeah, just about internet battle plan, you know, and it, it, it's it's so much fun. And the website, folks, is internetbattleplan.com. It's for internet managers, dealers, uh, people in the automobile industry, uh, technology conference. Listen, big guy, what else would you like to tell the audience before we, we conclude this broadcast? Well, first of all, I'm very grateful to be able to do this, Jim. Thank you, my buddy. I just appreciate you. And I would say I'm going to reiterate what the great Zig Ziglar said, and I mentioned before, that you can get anything you want if you help enough other people get what they want. We start by listening. Listen to what they are looking for. Where are they hurting? What do they need? And how can we help them in consulting, helping, and really helping? Helping is the new selling. That's the way to do it. My buddy Jay Bear talks about that. It's real important that we find out where people are and don't hold yourself back. Push yourself. Push yourself and be able to go and become the very person that you want to be. Get people around you like Jim Ziegler that can help you. You can get, have him around you by buying his material. Get into it. Be willing to part with a few coins and learn how to do it with your time, your money, and your energy. And then it'll come back to you rich many, many times over. And that's the way to do it. And if I can help you on the decisions you have or need some help on that, go over to terrybrock.com. Drop me a note. You've got to see a way to do that. The email is terry at terrybrock.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Okay, Terry, I, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am that you agreed to do this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw and heard is genuine. I use a word to describe Terry Brock that I don't use to describe many people. It's an archaic word. He's a decent person. Okay. I mean, genuine, cares about people. He'll help you every way he can. Go visit him at terrybrock.com. Well, Terry, I'm about to hit the, the sign off. Uh, anything you want to say before I get out of here? I would say go for it. Don't hold yourself back. Find out what you want to do. Get the resources. Train yourself and be willing to part with the time, the money, and the energy to make it happen. Get a battle plan. Get the right coaches. We can only do so much on our own. You get other people that can point out truthfully how you're doing. Go, okay, you're doing that right. But over here, this isn't good. You know, you can do it a little differently. And this one over here, don't even do that at all. It's getting in the way of you. <laughs> do this, do that. Get those coaches that can help you and be willing to put that in there. And then you can succeed. Terry, take care. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah.